Right, welcome back, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Um, it's the final sessions of today. Um, coming up very soon is our final panel, which Ray will be moderating. Um, but before we do our panel, we just want to um, talk to one of our special guests um, and talk about strategy and AI strategy. So I'm delighted that joining me now is Daryl Jordan-Smith from Wind River. Thanks for um, zooming in, um, in zooming yes. in across, across wild London um, to join us for this one. Um, so all, all day, Daryl, we've been um, looking at hopefully use cases and strategies and thoughts and, and tokens and AI, obviously. Um, but we want to sort of look down at what is the relationship between certain vendors and, and, and telcos. Uh, and I'd kind of start off, first of all, is what is Wind River doing in this area for telcos? How specifically are you address, listening to their needs and meeting their needs? Sure. I think really three things that come to mind. Number one, you know, we're building out our technology. We have a, a technology called Conductor, uh, which is an AI-based software um, um, inference stroke gen AI tool set that allows you to monitor networking flows, allows you to do um, predictive maintenance, allows you to interrogate what's happening in the network and have a more of a natural language engagement so you can actually leverage the systems and technology and, and not necessarily having the top engineers to hand at one point in time. So really trying to make that interaction more natural and engaging, leveraging AI tools with Conductor. So that's the first thing we're doing. Uh, the second thing we're doing is we're working with a diverse ecosystem of semiconductor technologies out there, companies like Qualcomm, NXP, Intel, uh, NVIDIA, to look at what we need to build for them that is very specific to the silicon that they, they, they're putting in place. So we can actually light up key features in that silicon that is, is sort of in midstream from an open source perspective or proprietary from some of the things that they want to try and achieve, specifically to enable different applications and services that might sit in the network, and also look at business models, which is kind of the third thing around how we use AI to generate new services for the telco operators. A good case in point is what we're doing with our, 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 our mother company, Aptiv, who are very, very large in the automobile industry. How do we actually use connected vehicles? How do we use the electrification of vehicles? How do we deal with things such as electronic vehicle takeoff and landing, some of those, those futuristic projects? How do we use you know, 5G and, and networking operations to facilitate new applications and new services that occur across the network infrastructure, leveraging AI as a core element. And you need those, those components. You need the software, you need the hardware, you obviously need the ecosystem. Uh, and in this case, the automobile industry is a good example of that. And as I mentioned, we're kind of expanding that a little bit into aerospace as well with uh, uh, the electronic vehicle takeoff and landing uh, concepts that we're building out um, a lot in China at the moment, but will be coming to Europe really soon. When you have these conversations with the semiconductor industry, which I find a fascinating aspect of this, um, how do you, do you drill down into, into specific verticals when you have these conversations with them about what, what vertical requirements are and specifically, obviously, the telco requirements? Yeah, we do. And, and, and Wind River, we're really focused on four key verticals. Um, industrial, which includes energy and manufacturing. So there is a energy and manufacturing element to what we do. Uh, a lot of our clients in that area, you know, companies like Schneider Electric and ABB, who are into building robotics and uh, digital factory automation, and how you would actually deploy 5G-based private infrastructure to support some of those applications and services. So that's one area that we're very focused on, uh, and that's very AI-centric as well. Um, the other one is around aerospace, and I hinted towards you know some of the vertical takeoff and landing uh, elements, but also what you'd experience in an aircraft overall, how you would manage communications and experiences uh, for infotainment in, in the in, in the aircraft on the more on the commercial side. Um, and then if you then look at the third vertical, we're very focused on. I mentioned automotive, very big area, and what we're, we're trying to drive there uh, in terms of the connected vehicle and the electrification of vehicles in general. And then the, the fourth one really is very focused also on, on that telco use case. You know, we, we, we're very focused on uh, ORAN as a, as, a, as a disaggregated concept. And again, 
we think AI is really going to add a lot of value in that environment because it's diverse and it will actually attract many different players and applications and services there that we're really leaning into. So coming back to your silicon comment, we're working with the silicon vendors to ignite elements in the silicon that will drive better performance characteristics, low power, high performance, security are those key elements. So building elements in, those, in the software that enables that from a hardware perspective and connecting that to a very diverse ISV ecosystem that we're working very closely with who are innovating in AI all the time. We talked earlier uh, in, in a couple of our panels about the need to scale and accelerate. I mean, are we talking quite lengthy lead times between having these discussions about what future silicon needs to incorporate and futures need to light up against what actually, when it comes out and is available for commercial use? So I think I think that, yeah, yeah, there's an interesting dichotomy there. I think the silicon vendors and the ones that we work with want to be more agile and move a lot faster. Um, one of the, the challenges they have as businesses is if they have to make from wait for major releases of core software, that could happen once or twice every 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 year. They want to move a lot faster. So what we're trying to do is figure out ways that we can leverage what we have done at Wind River to ignite that, that silica, those silicon elements. And our heritage uh, prior to being spun out of Intel was part of Intel. So we understand that environment you know, very, very holistically. And we're investing significantly in, in simulation technologies to speed up uh, innovation. So you can actually use the silicon that's there today and ignite elements that exist in it to build new applications and services. So the silicon vendors themselves can actually work with us to be a little bit more agile. What, in your conversations with the telecoms industry and focusing on, on telecoms in particular, what are the biggest challenges you're hearing from the CSPs um, that are the obstacles to them successfully implementing their AI strategies? Well, I think, again, it might be a little bit controversial here, but I think a lot of the CSPs in general have lost a lot of the in-house knowledge, the innovation gene that they they traditionally had, uh, say, 10 years ago. I think they're trying you know, in, in a very broad ways to, to, to get that back. And I think that's one of the inhibitors. You know, they have to think very differently and they have to be able to disrupt what they already have built in order to be innovative in what they need to go in terms of moving forward. Um, the other inhibitor that, you, that, that I experience personally is, you know, they're spending a lot of money in building out infrastructure, whether it's 5G uh, or, or beyond, and there isn't a killer app. And there's a lot of skepticism about that. So internally, they're finding it difficult to build those, those use cases and those business cases with a degree of uh, confidence that they're, you know, the, the board might want to buy into because they're a bit skeptical. So I think that, 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 that inertia is, is sort of a double whammy. You know, skills and, and, and scared to, to make the first step are, are two big barriers. And I think that you know we're going to see hopefully some of the operators in these areas, the CSPs, you know, innovate a little bit better. The ones that do innovate will will thrive, and I think the ones that don't will 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 stagnate. Fantastic. Well, Daryl, this this leads us really nicely onto our final session, which is all about building the telco AI ecosystem that Ray's going to take on now. Um, and uh, you and I will uh, we'll talk again tomorrow at the Great Telco Debate. Yeah, but for now, forward. thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.